Quite a few of you liked my video on the Maxitronix 60-in-1 electronic project kit. There's 60 projects in it, including some radio related. For instance, a couple of simple receivers and even a transmitter. I demonstrated the transmitter in the previous video, but didn't give it much time. So I'll go into that in a bit more detail today. Here's the circuit of the AM broadcaster as copied from the instruction manual for the 60-in-1 lab kit. It's just a very simple free-running oscillator. You can see the tuned circuit here. There's a tap in the middle of the coil. That's where power is applied to. And you have modulation applied to the base from this crystal earpiece. The transistor is described as a 2SC1684, though I suspect that almost any NPN small signal transistor should work instead of that. The frequency of this is adjustable with the variable capacitor, and being a ordinary ferrite rod coil, it covers the AM broadcast band. However, if you're an amateur and you want to do experiments including longer range experiments then there is a way to get this to operate on the amateur 160 meter band and that is to make use of this smaller coil here and half of the main coil because the less inductance there is the higher the frequency and we want to get this, instead of being um, the top being 1.6 megahertz, we want to get it up to 1.92 megahertz. That way it covers the amateur 160 meter band. And we can do that just by changing some of the connections on this coil. And here is an example here. What I've done is I'm only using half of the longer coil. That's got the tap in it that's how you identify it and then the smaller coil those two together is less than all of the longer coil which means that it has a lower inductance a higher resonance frequency including coverage up to about 2 megahertz if you've got this exact kit you can see the wiring here I'm not using 56 but I am using 57 and 58 that's half of the longer coil and I've got that connected in series with the shorter coil and as for the RF well I'll just put this probe here this is a frequency counter also a multimeter and I'm transmitting on 1825 kilohertz in the 160 meter amateur band if I turn on this radio and this is a broadcast radio that's tweaked to cover the 160 meter amateur band. You can hear a big carrier. The frequency shifted a bit, so it's a bit unstable. One, two, three, four, five. 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 There is scope, once we've got this transmitter on 160 meters, to experiment with some of the component values. Like what would happen if we had a smaller resistor instead of the 470K here, in series with the microphone? Would the modulation be better? And then having a look here, we've got a resistor of 680 ohm between the collector and the coil. What would happen if we reduced its value? or even removed it completely. And what about the battery voltage? At the moment, we're only on 1.5 volts. Could we get more power if we put it up to three volts? I had a probe around to see which connections gave me the greatest output power, and it proved to be one end of the coil on the collector end. And it's not indicating very much, just a movement up to one on the meter. That's with one to half volts. Now if I put up to three volts, then it's a lot more, it's over four. But 
with this sort of thing, you not only want a good amount of output power, but you also want strong and undistorted modulation. And that's at least as important, in fact more important than output power with AM. Now for the range test. The transmitter and receiver less than two metres apart. I'll just turn it up to maximum volume. And is a bit unstable because of the long wires. That is the signal. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Anyway, what you heard there was with one to half volts. We're now put up to three volts. And it's quite a good carrier. I'll just see if I can hear much when I talk into it. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Uh, it's not particularly strong modulation still. Let's go back to one and a half volts. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what I'll now do is that 470k resistor between the microphone and the bass will drop the value. Well, we've got another value here, 33k, so we'll just wire that in parallel and see if that changes the modulation level. improve the modulation. That's with one to half volts. We'll go up to three volts. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Now I think that's even better. Um, that's with three volts. I've got a nine volt battery here. And we'll see what happens with that. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Nine volts might be slightly stronger than three volts. Uh, yeah, looking at the meter, it's all the way up to eight. So yeah, definitely better with nine volts than three volts. Um, something else that is important, if you've seen one of my previous videos, I on those little AM transmitters that I built, just two transistors. If I completely zero beat this so that the carrier is just centered on it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. When it's centered, the modulation isn't particularly strong. But if I tune it slightly off, then the modulation is stronger. So I think this is actually generating FM, which makes sense. It's pulling the frequency of the oscillator. As we know, it's very unstable. So a little bit of voltage waving around will definitely pull the frequency. So we're actually slope detecting an FM signal. 
So it's just as much FM as AM. Still, we can still receive it on this receiver, so that's fine. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Here I'm using the 9 volt battery and it's pinning the needle so a lot more power output. If I wind the sensitivity back Now what happens if I reduce the resistance in the collector line between the collector and the coil. At the moment it's 680 ohm. Uh, just recall that we're up to reading five on the scale. We've now got 120 ohm connected. And it's a little bit higher at just over six. And now I've got no resistance in at all. And that's actually this part of the circuit. The 680 is now effectively short-circuited. And it goes up. Not much more. Having a look at the circuit, there's no resistors anywhere between the collector and the emitter, so I'll put the 120 back in. Now I've got the receiver near the camera and a bit more wire, nearly three metres. Probably about 30 metres away and we're still getting a carrier. Here's the circuit of the refined transmitter, or at least partly refined. Better modulation, higher power and coverage of most of the 160 metre amateur band. I've got the antenna connection going here, but this is a major flaw that remains with this type of circuit. The antenna puts loading on here and it changes the frequency and not only that but especially if the antenna is a wire blowing around then it will cause frequency drift. So that's why it's better to have a subsequent amplifier stage after this between the oscillator and the antenna particularly if it's a free-running oscillator like this that, at the best of times, isn't very stable anyway. But if you do want to persist with this one transistor arrangement, then one possibility could be to have a secondary coil over here and tap off the RF output to the antenna. But the important thing for maximum range with low power is efficient antenna coupling and I haven't covered this in any detail at all. The output impedance of this would be fairly high, it's fairly low power, unless you were to have the winding over here in which case it could be much lower and then your antenna impedance will be variable depending on if it's resonant, non-resonant, reactants. You may need to tune that out with antenna coupling series parallel coils, capacitors, networks, all that sort of thing. And all these considerations make the difference
between a low power transmitter that won't be heard past the end of your house versus one that could be heard some distance away. Anyway, I'll leave that to you. What I've described is a very simple design that you can put together. Hardest to get components, probably the crystal earpiece, unless you have one of those kits that was pictured. The variable capacitor and the inductor, the same arrangement apply there. It's not really a very practical transmitter, except for short distances, but you could still have fun with something like this communicating between rooms for example. Another big advantage of having this unit operate as a RF oscillator from 1750 to above 1900 is that you can use it as a beat frequency oscillator. That has harmonics on amateur bands like 3.5 and 7 megahertz and thus allows you to hear single sideband signals on an AM only shortwave receiver like you see here. A simple 1.8 MHz AM transmitter or a beat frequency oscillator for SSB reception. That's just two of the things that you can do with a simple electronic set like this. If there's any more that are amateur related, then please share your ideas on what you did in the comments. Live the QRP life with Minimum QRP. It covers equipment, antennas and operating to make you successful with low power amateur radio. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search the title on Amazon.